What, you want to see it? <laughs> At least describe it. It's always nice to know as much as you can about such a massive endeavor. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears, ladies. <laughs> Oh, Matt, you don't mind if my daughter Lisa joins us, do you? Oh, this might be fun. <laughs> oh, and my husband's here, too. What is this, Rod Stewart's hot tub? <laughs> so, what do we do first? Well, I'm going to go to the bathroom and just uh, fix up my face. <laughs> By that, I mean poke out my eyeballs. I don't think it would be so crowded. Some of the people are here for that poor young woman's funeral next door. I am so sorry. It's on the dress! <laughs> All right, remember the plan. Will I distract the widow? You trim the stiff. Make sure you can handle this. <laughs> I don't need to give the guy a complete makeover. We just need a few strands of hair. Now go work him out. Will, will that hurt him? He's dead. <laughs> what if whenever he died of the involved? Well, then get some chest hair. Well, what if he doesn't have any chest hair? Well, then head south of the border. <laughs> well, what if he has alopecia? Then no hair disease. What's your answer then, Liz? You think you know everything. You think you can just go around desecrating caskets for executive hair? <laughs> I like your style, Lab. You got real spunk. Liz, you don't know how happy it makes me feel to hear you say that ever since we... I'll get the hair. All right, Matt, you can do this. It's just casual sex with an entire family. Come on, Mark. The company's counting on you. Just think positive. You're the best. <laughs> A star. A star. Mrs. Bennett, we're so sorry. Abby, why don't you go take one last look at Mr. Bennett? I'm gonna miss your husband so much. It's not fair. He was such a wonderful man, so caring and with such a big heart. <laughs> what? Did I say the wrong thing? Oh, that's what killed him. He had an enlarged heart. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Bennett, I'm so sorry. I Your God now, Padre. <laughs> oh, uh, Marilyn. Yes. <laughs> Tim, we need to talk. You uh, called me Tim. Yes, I did. You're not going to be JFK anymore. Have I been shot? <laughs> no, Tim. The game is over. Uh, why? What started out as an amusing diversion has grown very old. You need to stop. And, uh, what if I don't? <laughs> And you? Here's twenty dollars. Go out and get us some burgers. I earned that money, lady. Now come on, take off your blouse. The money is a donation to Upton Weber Charities to help the mentally disturbed. Well, duh. I mean, that's why they sent me. I'm one of the mentally disturbed people that your money is going to help. 
So thank you, Mrs. Richards. Oh, that's a pretty strong grip you got there. You've been working out? No kind of people does that company hire. All right, the truth is I'm not mentally ill. And I'm not a pervert. You know, Ogden Weber is a highly reputable company. You know, if you just call my boss, he'll explain to you that this was all a big misunderstanding. I'll dial him directly. Oh. <laughs> Get out. Come back in an hour. We'll swing. <laughs> okay, remember, when we get in the gym, act like an executive. Janitor? Oh, hey, Scotty. He's from the mailroom. Howdy, ladies. How the hell did these schmoes get in our executive gym? isn't Gilligan's Island. Oh, it could be. Tomorrow, Fran and Maxwell's honeymoon gets off to a rough start when they find themselves stranded on a deserted island on the season premiere of The Nanny at 7.30. Up next, an all-new W5 with Tom Clark and Valerie Pringle.